I remember we had this old woman once. She came in Friday afternoon, 5.55. Hello, I need to buy a birthday card for my grandson. (laughs) If you're not out of the shop in five minutes, love, the only card he's going to be requiring is a condolence card. Make it quick. Because that's the thing, isn't it? There are some things, right? that I don't think will ever make the cultural crossover. We're so similar to Americans in so many ways, but some things they'll never get. Like customer service, for example, all right? They love that in America. We will never have that in the UK. We don't do customer service. And I think that should be celebrated, because I do not like customer service. I think it's an ugly thing. I like going into a shop anywhere in this country and knowing exactly where I stand, knowing that I'm a piece of Phone shopping, for example. Phone shopping here is so easy. You walk into the car phone warehouse, you know the drill, you're going to get ignored for days. <laughs> There'll be a corpse at the counter where some elderly man has gone in and tried to upgrade without his wife there to help. <laughs> and even when you do get assistance, it's going to be from some patronising little teenager in a suit that's constantly going to be asking you, how many minutes are you talking in a month, bruv? I don't know. <laughs> but when you leave the shop, you feel like you've earned your phone. I had to go to the Apple Store recently in New York. Oh my God. The Apple Store in New York is worlds away. It is like a big, white, glistening cathedral of c- <laughs> Before you even have your foot in the threshold of the door, there's some w- card with a fringe in your face. Hey buddy, my name's Drew. How's your day been going, hombre? <laughs> what brings you to the Apple Store today? I'm here to buy a phone, not make a friend. Off. <laughs> they applaud the first customer in of the day. The Apple Store in New York, they all stand around clapping like dickheads as he walks into the shop. Woo, we love you, man. Customer number one, you rock. <laughs> Can you imagine getting away with that behavior at a UK phone shop? At my local team mobile, the only customer that's getting applauded there is the last one out of the day. Oh, thank you've gone. We're going to end the pub, you blackberry. <laughs> both ways as well. I had to get a train when I was in America. I got onto the platform, and on the platform, they had a poster. On this poster was one of the American rail employees. She was this woman. She was all made up. Her eyes were full of hope and life. She had a smile on her face. And then underneath it, a little slogan. Hey, you got enough snacks for the journey? Enjoy your trip. Compare that to the posters that you get on every single station platform up and down this great country. What do you get? You get a picture of a National Rail employee with a massive black eye. Then underneath it, please don't hit our staff. I'm depressed as well that I even have to go to the Apple Store because I never wanted that from my life. I was perfectly content before. I was a non-iPhone user and I was happy. But like all non-iPhone users, eventually I gave in. I listened to them. I gave in to the iPhone Nazis, right? (laughs) These people that force you to get it. They make you buy it and they lie to you because they don't tell you about the bad shit. They only tell you the good things. They don't say, yeah, this phone is amazing, but unfortunately it has a battery life of 20 seconds. It's a bit like you found the best new buddy in the world, the coolest guy you've ever met, but this guy also has ME because it's asleep all the time. <laughs> no, it's a smartphone, it's a smartphone. You need to get a smartphone. A smartphone. Do you know what? I wish I still had a dumb phone. That's what I like. A phone where I knew where I stood. You know the phone I wish I still had? The Nokia 3310. Oh, yeah. There was a phone. The iPhone with all of its apps and its maps and its GPS. The 3310 gave a man all he needed. Stopwatch, calculator, and snake. F*** anything else. There was no pretension with it. The most pretentious the 3310 got is when it upgraded itself to the 3330. The only thing they added to that model was a currency converter on a phone that didn't even work abroad. No pretension as well. No pretension with like predictive text messaging. Predictive text messaging on the 3310 was bliss. You tried to type a word into it that was more than like five letters long, it would give up. <laughs> it was like he was saying, yeah, you want to use poncy, fancy f- language like that? You're on your own, nobbed. <laughs> no, 
with the iPhone, where does the iPhone get this vocabulary? Constantly jumping to conclusions. Nobody talks like that. It doesn't matter what you put into the bloody thing. You're like, A-N. Did you mean androgynous? No! And! I meant and! I realise this is probably looking now like I'm falling down on the side of the consumer because that's not the case. All right, that is not the case at all. Because I'm going to share with you tonight, Hammersmith Apollo, I've actually done a little bit of time right on the front line. I did four weeks, one summer holidays, working in Clinton cards. <laughs> the horror. <laughs> Have we got any other survivors in? Any other vets? Who else has worked in a shop? Show of hands. Yeah, okay. Front row, where did, where did you work? Burton Yondai's. Burton Yondai's? Yeah, Burton. No, Burton Shoe Shop, sorry. Burton Shoe Shop? Yeah. What did you get it confused with initially? <laughs> There's different types of burns. This is probably why you didn't last very long there. Oh, you've, you've been drinking, you're an alcoholic, okay. The, uh, <laughs> you were thrown out of the shoe shop, weren't you? Stole all the shoes. So uh, what was your worst type of customer to come into Burton's Someone shoe like shop, you. the most annoying? Someone like me? <laughs> why someone like me? I have feet, I buy shoes. Why, because I'd be quite picky with the shoes. I'd want something nice, would I? What, what, what are you rocking down there? What, that's, you look like a guard in a women's prison. Like, you should... It's a proper lesbian boot. I like it. The, uh, no, I'm not. I used to find the worst coming into Clinton Cards, right, the worst type of customer was the elderly. I used to hate the elderly coming in because they'd always come in right at the end of the day. They'd pick their moments. I remember we had this old woman once. She came in Friday afternoon, 5.55. <laughs> If you're not out of the shop in five minutes, love, the only card he's going to be requiring is a condolence card. Make it quick. <laughs> How did you leave Burns? Did you walk out or were you sacked or...? I got sacked, mate. You got sacked? Yeah. What for? What did you do? I didn't sell enough... Uh, you didn't products. sell enough shoes? No, products. Products? Yeah, with the shoes. With the shoes? Yeah. There's additional stuff yeah. besides yeah. the shoes that no, you have to sell. Cleaner. Leather cleaner. Leather cleaner? Yeah. Who the f buys leather cleaner? <laughs> They sacked you for that. These f where are they? <laughs> Next time there's a riot, we're gonna f them up. <laughs> Sacking you with f like that, that is so unfair. <laughs> Do you know what they got me on? Clinton cards. Do you know what they got me on? It's so unfair, because there was no stipulation when I signed up to the contract that I couldn't do what I did. Come about 5.30, I couldn't be asked. I wanted to go down the pub. So I used to stand in the doorway, just ushering people out of the shop. And if anyone did try and get by me, I'd just be like, moonpig.com, try it. 